Hey everybody, it's Maggie Mulhern from Modern Salon TV. I am here with, yes, it's the Tabitha Coffee. We are so excited <laughs> to be meeting with you today. We're at Matrix Destination in Orlando, Florida. It's January 2018 and you are just keeping on top of everything. Uh, Tabitha got the only standing ovation that I've seen at the show. I was, it was so impressive that people were there at the crack of dawn to see you after a big night of partying. It was great. So I'm just going to kick off the questions. Um, one of the most important things that you were talking about was the consultation mm -hmm. and how important it is that you are human to human, that you're not a robot, and that you're communicating with your client. So talk to us about that. Yeah, I, I, look, we know it's important, right? So we all know that it's important, and there is a study that we have that we use here at Matrix when I teach my classes that 97% of hairdressers say they do a consultation every single client, every single time, yet only 7% of our clients say they have ever received a consultation. So when you look at that number, it makes you go, not all the hairdressers are lying. I know we're not all saying that we're lying, we do a consultation and we don't, so we feel like we've done it. And not all the clients are lying because that wouldn't benefit them. But if only 7% of them are feeling like they've ever had one, what, what's the discrepancy? What's happening in that communication that doesn't feel like it's a consultation? So it's something I've been really fixated on and really exploring and you know, you know I'm doing a lot of different things and I'm a business coach and I, I take all these other classes. So it's really the communication that starts to break down. Often for us, we're busy, we're behind the chair, we have a limited amount of time. A client will say, I just want to do a trim. Okay, great, we'll just do a trim today, go on back. We don't clarify. And if you don't ask a question, you can't have a conversation. So it's asking the right questions of your client and getting more information. And the reason it's so important is when it's a first time client, we only have one shot to make them happy and make them come back and make them be a repeat client. We only have one shot to make them trust us, like us, impress them, right? Show them what we're made of to make them not only love the way they look and feel, want to come back, be a permanent client, buy products from us and go and tell all their friends about us and hopefully do a social media post for us as well. So you have to work a little harder and in the right way to be able to build that trust straight away and the way you do it is to have empathy and it's to listen and it's to listen to hear what the client's saying, not just to let yourself speak. It's taking on what they're saying. It's asking them, how do you want to feel when your hair is this way? How does it make you feel? Not because I think we should be all sh you know, shrinks and doing that. It's because our clients speak in a different language than us. And our clients talk about, my hair makes me feel mumsy. I feel like a soccer mom. I want to look sexy, professional, modern, trendy, right? That's how a client speak to us about how they want their hair to make them feel. So we need to mirror that back to them and have that conversation to get them to open up more. And I remember you said that um, at another presentation, yep. that the mirroring the conversation. And also you said something about it. these days it's one and done. Mm -hmm. You don't That's get right. the, those opportunities you know, they're not gonna give you those five opportunities to get it right. No, we don't. And there's another statistic, um, and it, sorry, I have so many statistics running through my head. I think it was 67% of clients leave and aren't satisfied. So sometimes it isn't because of the work. It's just because the hair can be okay, right? It can be nice hair, just not the nice hair they wanted. And that's what it's about. That's why the conversation is so important because it you could do a great job, you could do a beautiful color service, you could do a beautiful blow dryer, you could do a beautiful whatever it is that you've done. It's just not what the beautiful is that they wanted. And that means they're not happy and that means they're not coming back. And they also want to feel significant. That's another study that was done Absolutely. that people feel, I, you know, they the don't one, care. The one thing that we all want is to feel of value, right? And we have to value our clients. And we do have studies that show that 
the majority of clients, when they leave our businesses, they don't feel that we value them. So why do you want to come back and spend your money, spend your time, and you know, not just your time with a person, but your valuable time, because we have so little of it, it's a commodity, in someone's chair if you don't feel like they value you. You don't want to. You know, clients, and we know this and we forget, clients don't want to be your therapist. They don't want to hear about the problem with your husband and your kids and how tired you are and how much your boss sucks and they don't want to hear that. You know what, they also don't want to hear about the, and we know we shouldn't talk about certain things and politics is one. It's hard not to sometimes just because it's everywhere and the conversation comes up. We have enough of that being bombarded with us at the news, right? We want, we want to sit there and it's one of the few times that you can fill your own tank up, feel really good about yourself and get something done at the same time. And that's what clients want from us. They want an expert. They want us to solve their hair problems. They want to feel good about themselves. They want to feel pampered and valued and get what they want in a small amount of time. And when they do that, when they feel like they were valued and they feel that trust and connection, then you've won them. And they will come back and they will tell their friends and they will buy product from you and they will do all of those things until you forget to value them again. Right? So you also talk about leadership mm -hmm. and not just leadership to your staff, but also, again, to your client, that you are leading her mm -hmm. to do the right thing. How about with staff? How do you uh, behave as a leader in a salon with your staff? Well, to me, a leader, as a leader, my job as a leader is to inspire other people to be the best version of themselves. And part of being a good leader for me is I can see the potential in someone even when they can't see it. I know it's in there. And I need to find how to bring it out. That's my job, right? So I can see all this potential in there. I just need to work out how we can get that potential out so that you can see what I can see and we can bring it to light. That's, that's the job. That's my job with the client as well. I can see your beauty. I just need you to see your beauty and how you want to see it so I can bring it to the surface for you. That's my job. And right? You're so great. Um, we're going to go to your <laughs> questions, but there's something that I don't know if you know this, but uh, Tabitha had a salon uh, near us and my daughters used to go to Tabitha. Did you know that? And they would come home and they're like, Mom, there's this really cool lady and she does great hair and she has a cool accent. And now, and then this is before I knew who Tabitha was, before you knew who Tabitha was. So you've been rocking it and doing great hair and leading for, well, thank you. for many, many years. Mm -hmm. So questions. Okay, so Ray is saying that uh, Ray needs some help. Small town, been in the business 28 years, 100% booked, 100% return rate. I need ideas on how to raise my prices, but not screw people that have been with me for 25 plus years. Great question, Ray. So look, here's what I want to say. First of all, um, we just did this great business panel and we had um, editors come in from Wall Street Journal, Dow Jones, Glamour and Allure magazine. And it was really fascinating because one of the things the Glamour editor said is they did um, an investigative piece that there were clients out there that were actually booking, and these aren't like Kardashian clients, these are regular women. Okay, so I think she said that she was from Tennessee or something. So she's not like some fancy schmancy rolling in money person, I wanna clarify, that couldn't get the hair she wanted and started looking on Instagram for people to like solve her hair needs and be that expert. And there are all these women that are flying across the country to go to hairdressers that they've seen do this consistent great work on Instagram, that do these live chats and do all of this to help them. So the only reason I tell you that story is because I want you to stop the I'm in a small town mentality. That doesn't matter anymore, right? Mm -hmm. It just doesn't. And you're not screwing your clients over by raising your prices if you are doing great work, giving them exactly what they want, valuing them as, as an individual and as a client, 
right? Being consistent, that's charging more for that service and charging what you're worth. That's not screwing people over. That's charging what you're worth, right? And what it costs you to run your business. That's just called the price of doing business. Mm. So that mentality really has to shift because the number one thing that hairdressers have a hard time with is raising their prices. And it's because of these personal relationships we build, right? And then all of a sudden we are used the reasoning, oh, I'm in a small town or, oh, but it's Maggie. I've known Maggie forever and Maggie's got two daughters and they're going to get married and she, you know her money's going to that and her husband's not working and this is how you start to make up this narrative in your own head about the person sitting in your chair that may not actually even be their true story you're just becoming their accountant all of a sudden and minding their pocketbook for them that's crazy right all of us know just as humans that cost of goods go up right our taxes go up, gas goes up, utilities go up, insurance goes up, products go up, everything goes up. That's called inflation and business. So percentage wise, uh, how much should a hairdresser, hair colors raise her prices a year? Well, I think you, that you do have to look at where you are because it will change for everyone of where you are. But there's nothing wrong once you're consistent to even if it's 10%, it's not that much to be honest, that you're raising it consistently every year. It really isn't. The problem is that some hairdressers haven't raised their prices in 10 years, 15 years, 20 years. I mean, I'm sure a lot of you out there have done that and you're like, oh, stuck, now what do I do? And look, the way I do it is, um, I do it to let everyone know. So we all have cycles. Normally, for me, I would find that a 12 week period I've seen pretty much everyone's come through in 12 weeks. So if I post something, let the receptionist know, you know, if you work by yourself, tell your clients, this is the date, you know, whatever it is, February 8th, our prices are going up, but you start telling them 12 weeks before, you can do a dollar amount. I find a dollar amount works better than saying 10%. So everything's going up by $5 or $7 or $10. Some clients are gonna go, oh, I don't know if I can afford that. You know what that's okay I truly understand that however everything's gone up around us and I want to continue giving the best possible service use the most amazing products that I could use not shortcut on anything I want to keep myself up to date and educated so I can bring all of that to you and I have a business to run so unfortunately just like everything in life my prices have to go up as well all right we do have a question here um, that's a little bit different from what we've been talking about Katie asks, she has a lot of male clients who don't like talking or describing what they want in the consultation. How do you handle that and how do you make sure that your client leaves satisfied? It's a great question. I think guys, not to generalize, but guys are a little bit different, right? They're, they don't know what they want sometimes, but guys definitely know when they don't like it, right? Really quickly. And you know better than me because you work you know, on male clients all the time. They're actually quite fussy, um, which is a good thing. And sometimes, again, it's in the, I don't like this, it's not working for me, but I can't tell you what it is I want. So what I would do is try to get to it quickly. Um, social media is great for this. Have set up privately, it doesn't have to be public, like a Pinterest board, right? That you can keep on your phone and have mm -hmm. all these different male looks on there that were like longer, and you could put them in categories, right? Like shorts, mediums, long, texture, however you want to do it. And use that as a reference of a guy. Is this, you know, is this short enough for you? Is this textured enough for you? How about something like this? Men tend to respond better with visuals mm. than sometimes explaining. And I think that's a great way to do it without having to ask them too many questions. And they'd appreciate it as well because you're nudging them in the right direction. Is there a question there? Because I have one. I have, we have, I have one last question. One last question. Um, how do you feel about no compete contracts? Oh, it's really Ooh. interesting. I know it was too oh, juicy to pass up. I know we're on a time crunch, but um, it's a good question. Look, you know what? I think uh, I'm not a lawyer, clearly. So I'm not a lawyer. Don't take me at everything I say. And every state is different. So you should always consult a lawyer. Um, they're often done as a way to 
build intimidation in some cases, right, and keep someone there, and not every state is enforceable because it's an at-will state, blah, 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 that's a legal spiel, go and check it out yourself. Um, I personally think that it's not, if people want to go, it's not going to stop them from going, right? It just isn't. And I think it's building a team that you can trust. Um, the thing that's always bothered me about our industry is we don't leave in the right way, right? We just don't. We walk out, right? Salons walk out en masse or people say, I'm not coming back next week. That, I hate that because we all grow. It's called growth. We all grow. We grow up. We want our own businesses. We want a different future. There's nothing wrong with that. Right, that's just what something that should be celebrated, um, not feared. And I don't want to make someone stay in my business by making them sign a piece of paper. I want them to stay there because they believe in what I'm doing, the business I'm building, the life that I'm giving them, the education I'm showing them, what I'm teaching them, and because they want to be there. And if they don't, then bye. Mm. That was so great. That's such a great question. Well, thank you so much, Welcome. Tabitha. I love it that you're walking around. Is this your uh, your private name? Anna. Anna. Anna oh, so. was it Anna on there? Oh, that's so funny. You're all staring <laughs> at that. I didn't even realize. She grabbed somebody else's Sorry. coffee. But Sorry. That's, that's her private name if you're trying to find <laughs> Tabitha. That's fight funny. Anna when she's traveling. That's funny. Thank you so much. Thanks for giving us this time. Uh, you're just really doing such a great job thank here you. at the Matrix Destination 2018 here in Orlando, Florida. We're having a great time and, and love spending time with you.